All right, ladies and gents, we have another Saturday video where we're going to go over a bunch of bigger time frames to really pay attention to this. There's one thing that I wanted to talk about before we get into some technical analysis for the spy cues, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, Nvidia, AMD, Meta um, going forward today. And we're going to go into things like the dollar and yields and things like that as well. But I just wanted to talk about something real quick, and it is around these weekly ranges. I just wanted to um, inform you guys, this is why it is very, very important to understand the tools that you are using. Uh, and I really appreciate the Patreon member who brought this to my attention because I think it is very important that you realize that th crazy things do happen. And what did we call last week? We saw this crossing of this, and we mentioned that multiple times last week, that if you cross the five across the 20, you have a 90% chance to test top Bollinger. And that's exactly what we did. And then we also said last week, we're probably going to have a short squeeze and boom, we get that short squeeze. Okay. Now we head to higher levels. And where do we go? We go outside of that range. And I said this multiple times in a short squeeze, you go outside of the range. And this is what I really wanted to tackle here. These, these purple lines here, they are not 100%. OK, if we get outside of these early on in the week and we crash back down, that does not happen 100 percent of the time. And that is very, very important to understand. This is what is priced in with the options market. And you will understand this very, very well if you take the course and people who took the course already probably do understand what I'm talking about here. This is one of those 32 percent times. And we mentioned a short squeeze is a lot of the time going to close you outside of these ranges. So we want to pay attention to that. Now, if this would have happened early on in the week, we could have had some probabilities for this to drop. But as it's happening on Friday, we end outside the range. This is regular behavior for these ranges. There's a 32% chance to end up here. That is not 100%. If it was 100% chance to land in this zone, we would all be very, very rich in just a matter of months. And that would be awesome. And I wish that it was the case, but it's not. The market is much more complicated than that. And you have to be on your toes and you have to be always willing to learn. And I'm I'm very fearful that a few people are just saying, oh, it's outside the range. Let me short this zero DTE. And then it doesn't happen and they get frustrated. That's not how you do it. Um, if you really want to learn how to do these things, the course down in the description. But right now you just need to understand this happens 32% of the time. And if you get outside of it early, 68% of the time you will land in this zone or 68% of the time you go sideways. So 68% chance that you land in this zone, 32% chance you see something crazy to the out, outer rim, right? So we have to pay attention to that. I just wanted to clarify that for everyone today. And now we can get into some technical analysis. Bye. We said this last week, we're most likely getting a short squeeze, right? We said that multiple times. Now up in this area, we were like, okay, we need to be a little bit worried about a pullback to the five. We pulled back to the five, right? We even got that test of the five exactly right here. And we ended up outside of the range. One of those 32% times, which was mentioned multiple times, a short squeeze will take you outside of that range. This is a crazier thing happening, but what do we have above us? That monthly expected move, okay? So 90% um, chance to test top Bollinger. Like we said, all of these things, and I know that as we approach these levels, I still got out of my longs, right? I did not take any more longs. You guys saw I was gonna take a long play, and then I said, no, I'm gonna be a good trader, and I got right out of that. Now, some people did take that play and made some money. That's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine for you to assess your own risk. But I just wanted to make sure to point out we're testing top Bollinger. Now we could see another pullback. We could keep riding this five. So if we see these small pullbacks, that's perfectly fine. And we're going to talk a little bit about this with Meta because that's the stock that was brought up because that's way outside of its range. It saw something crazy happen. So what I wanted to point out for the SPY right now isn't necessarily this daily chart. I mean, yes, the daily chart is very important and we know that it is down by that center line. And now we have the potential for maybe a double top to come in this week, but the craziness can continue. I want to let you know that the same things are true on the shorter time frames. They can happen on daily time frames. So that means if they want to keep this party going, we could see three more divergences in this overall move before this thing crashes down. This monthly signal will take a long time to prove itself. It will. It's a monthly signal. It's going to take months and months to prove itself. And how do, how do we know that's not, you know, two months of buying up before this actually wants to come back down and complete this kind of divergence? How do we know this divergence is even going to complete? And maybe the craziness continues and we get hyperinflation. You have to be open to all scenarios. Now, the most likely 
thing that happens from here is we're going to see maybe even some more positivity get that daily divergence going and that's what we're paying attention to at this moment and we will change that as we go we trade like water on this channel we are open to multiple scenarios and as of right now i'm seeing this how it is right now and it looks like there's a divergence forming but if that never rolls over and it doesn't give that divergence we can just see that skyrocket one of these examples to show you is on the weekly scale so i want you to be aware of the um I want you to be sorry someone called me i want you to be aware of the weekly chart here and how that could happen on the monthly right we were talking about some kind of divergence at this level this would have been a great level to get rejected it's testing the highs but we didn't do that the craziness continued and now we don't have that divergence but the reason i'm leaning towards maybe we even cross up and go touch that annual that yearly expected move up here at 543.71 um, remember 68 percent chance to land below that area um, by the end of the year so what do i want to pay attention to if i get a couple weeks of buying here well what if i get a small divergence here and that completes that would be a big big signal that this monthly is going to complete and we're going to see some kind of downward price action that leads to maybe this crossing over if this crosses over we still have to go fully negative to get some kind of full-on market crash which is what i'm leaning towards but i want you to be aware this is a monthly signal so that will take some time to prove itself Okay, it was a group chat, so I'm sorry about that buzzing. If that did annoy you, I'm very, very sorry. But as of right now, what are we seeing on the queues? Very, very similar signal, right? So very similar signal at this point. Um, the queues actually able to hold up as well, right? We're holding up, going to higher levels. This would have been a great area for that divergence to complete, and we could have seen that craziness happen and go down to lower levels, right? We could have crossed on this MACD and seen some kind of crash happen, but that is not happening at this moment. We build back up. We called the bottom in this area, and now we head to higher levels. So we want to pay attention to the next one, the weekly. What does the weekly look like? Well, it looks very, very similar to the SPY, but the only thing here is the queues looks a little bit weaker with momentum. So if it does get that upward push, the reason that I'm saying it looks weaker with the momentum here is because you would have a triple divergence. Remember, this actually did have divergence. So you saw a little bit more dramatic drop here than the SPY, right? We were able to cut below the 20 week moving average. Now we're starting to build back up right before a big event like CPI. Who's to say that CPI doesn't take us higher? Right. We have people like Tom Lee coming out and saying, oh, yes, uh, people are going to be surprised that inflation is actually going down. So uh, that is something very surprising. We could head all the way up and get another test in the channel that we're in right now. We could head all the way up towards 480. We could head all the way up towards this yearly expected move of 492.28. Now, that would be way outside of our monthly expected move right now. So I'm not leaning towards that. I think that we might not even cross on this weekly MACD to get this signal, honestly, because if I look at the daily scale, if I look at the daily scale right now, what do I have? I have the steepest divergence I've had if that is able to complete. And that's very important to understand. That's if it is able to complete. And that's why you're going to want to tune in on Sunday. We have to follow the shorter time frames to figure out if this is actually going to happen. As of right now, you do have divergences up here. So you might want to subscribe so you can tune in on Sunday as we give you those weekly expected moves, those daily expected moves for Monday and for next week. Week. And then we do have those divergences up here, which signed for weakness. Now, the thing about the cues, this was a short squeeze and we ended up in the range, right? We're still in the range. 68% chance to land in the zone. We land in the zone. We had a big, big range this week and we landed in that area. Um, so very, very cool to see that. But if we were taking any upside here, well, once we approach that weekly expected move, we should say, hey, it's Friday. We're going to close most likely in the range because this isn't getting crazy at this moment and taking profit is the smartest thing to do here. But I just wanted to show you guys how steep the divergence would be if we get some kind of pop higher and just match these highs, right? If we can match up in this level and then see maybe we touch the top side weekly expected move and see that drop off. I know we have divergences here. We'll talk about these things on the shorter time frames, but this is is really what you have to be aware of and this is how you see the momentum is dying out in this move and sure we got some bottom here if this is going to be prolonged then we have to pay attention to bigger time frames but as of right now the most likely thing is maybe a pop higher or the spy goes higher and the cues don't match that and we see that start to fall the cues making a lower high while the spy actually matches it and gets some kind of double top that's what i'm going to be paying attention to this week i would not 
read too much into, and we'll go into this on Sunday. I would not read too much into YouTubers who are trying to say CPI is going to blow up the market and be terrible. Don't try to get that mindset. Just follow the signal CPI. We don't know what numbers are going to come out. And if that number is good, you can see a lot of bad things in your portfolio if you're trying to take a bunch of shorts, right? So we don't want to uh, do those types of things because what if this just pulls back before CPI and we see that push higher and then this is the actual moment that we had lower uh, for the queues. I just want you to be open to multiple scenarios. Know that we're not even outside of the weekly or the monthly range at this point. We're about to get new weekly ranges that might look something like this. And maybe we want to go up there before CPI. That's when we can be a little bit of a contrarian. But at this moment, we have to say the craziness can continue until we see something break in the system or a change in tone from the Fed. Now, Apple, this is going to be very, very good on these shorter time frames. I just wanted to show you the daily. It's still close enough to be going negative here, and we have a big gap below us. We have a big gap below us, and this could reverse down. And we're going to talk about Tesla right after this, and it looks eerily similar when we go into the shorter time frames on Sunday. So please do subscribe so, you, so we can give you that information. It's very, very helpful. Now, what am I seeing as of this week? Well, I'm getting a crossing up of Apple on the MACD. I'm getting a green impression on the MACD. Now, this looks like into decision. Maybe CPI is the thing that pushes this higher or pushes us down. We will be paying attention to this. You're still in negative territory, but you're getting a green impression. So this would tell me I'd be very cautious shorting next week um, because I really need to follow the signals on the shorter time frames. Because if this is crossing up on this MACD, that means it has a chance to go positive here, which could lead to a prolonged move to get to something like 194 or something like that. It could lead to in this zone. That's kind of what I've leaned towards is Apple getting to this zone and creating some something up here that is a signal of weakness because that is a sell-off zone at this moment. It's a very important zone. And the last time we did break through a, a, one of these sell-off zones, well, that was a strong move. And notice where that resistance came in, the next sell-off zone. Okay, so we're paying attention to this. But I wanted to show you this uh, compared to Tesla on the daily chart just to keep keep Apple in your brain real quick because Apple, sure, it looks a little bit wonkier, but in the shorter time frames, you can really see how Apple kind of looks similar, right? We get this big pop with the earnings. We pull down, we get a little pop for maybe a lower high, and then Tesla starts to drop down to lower levels. As of right now, Tesla looks like it wants to cross down on this MACD, but will that happen right away? Right now, it's kind of in a wedge. We're going to talk about this on the shorter time frames on Sunday. We could get some kind of pop to test 180.92, and then CPI is going to be very, very important. PPI is going to be important. We have so much data coming out now over the next two weeks. We got to move around those rocks. We got to be trading like water and figuring out which way this what the stream is going. We don't want to end up going in the sewer. We want to follow these trends, make sure we're in the right move, trade like water so we end up going downstream into the meadow. Now, Amazon is a stock that is convincing me, hey, we, we could really start to see some ugly, ugly stock market behavior next week. We really, really could, but I have to pay attention to the signals. The craziness can continue. Don't think because you're seeing this right here that it has to complete right now. There's a lot of room on this RSI if we're going to make a divergence a little bit higher, get to those overbought readings. Well, notice that we got above that reading um, on on what was this day? On this day of uh, like Thursday, April 11th. So if we wanted to, we could go a little bit higher, get a little bit more overbought, and then that completes. Make sure to wait for these confirmations. These will be great signals to follow, and I'll probably be taking some two-month out positions if I start to see this for Amazon, because Amazon is showing a lot of weakness in this area, showing double top as of right now, seeing that weakness break below the five. Maybe we go test the 20 before CPI, and then we see that bounce back up and something else rips it away. So as of right now, we have to pay attention to these signals because if this completes and goes negative, that would be very, very bad. But I just wanted to show you there's room in this RSI to head a little bit higher, and we're going to pay attention to those shorter time frames on Sunday. Now, NVIDIA, very interesting, but this looks like flagging, right? It looks flagging like it wants to head a little bit higher, and maybe NVIDIA hits 1,000. Now, the problem, if NVIDIA actually does hit 1,000 and goes higher here before its earnings with CPI or something like that, we could see that ripped away with those earnings because what are we seeing right now? A divergence that could form with um, very, very close to that center line, very, very close to going into a negative trend. So we have to pay attention to the signals for NVIDIA. If it's going to see that pop before earnings, I'd be a little bit scared, but am I going to trade around earnings? No, no, I am not. That is a 50-50 flip. But hey, on uh, on the 22nd, we can flip the magical coin that's been doing pretty good for us, right? We can flip that magical coin who 
for, for some reason has been doing okay <laughs> but we can pay attention to that coin um it's 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 pretty much just a um a symbol of how earnings really is a 50 50 flip because we don't know what they are going to say are they going to produce good numbers but bad news we'll have to see but as of right now if people believe hey Nvidia is going to be bullish for earnings. What if that happens before earnings that might already be priced in and that's just ripped away whether they have good numbers or bad. Now, AMD on the weekly scale has been really, really breaking down. Now, this area here, we told you about some divergences happening, and we can show you that on the daily scale. The daily scale, we saw these divergences. We had a two-hour divergence at the same time. Very, very good play. Looks like some flagging. What do we do? We break out of a zone. We're testing the top of it. Who's to say we don't head a little bit higher? Now, in order to fully buy back in this, I think we need some kind of reaction to that 160.87. I'm going to be really paying attention to my weekly ranges for AMD this week. I think that will be very, very helpful um, to uh, take some kind of play with AMD at this moment. Now, as of right now, I'm not in AMD. I'm not playing this divergence or anything like that. I think something really bad's coming around the corner because of how the SPY and the Qs look. It looks like they're going to struggle to head higher from this level. So this has to fully go positive to really complete this divergence to convince you this has to go higher. As of right now, we're not seeing that. Real quick on the daily scale for Meta, remember we were talking about this crossed up right on this bar, that craziness can continue. We had a bunch of divergences up here and this is one um, that was actually messaged about on Patreon about that, hey, these these levels were really, really wrong because um, we, we closed outside of them. 32% of the time you close outside of them, guys. 68% chance to land down. That's why you want that reaction early on in the week because once you start to close outside or get outside of it on a Friday, well outside of it up towards 476, almost 10 full points there. Um, the the lineup for you to actually have one of those 32% uh, chances is right there. So you really want this to happen early on in the week. Now that did happen pretty early on in the week, but that craziness continued. We saw the resistance come in at this level. We saw the resistance for the retest. And we can talk about this on the shorter time frames, but this is where it's very important to understand this is a short squeeze. We said multiple times a short squeeze ends a lot of things outside of their range by the end of the week. Now, if that would have been a big move, created big divergences or something like that. You can read into it if that's on a Monday, Tuesday, maybe even a Wednesday. But as we get to Thursday, Friday, you have to say, we don't have a lot of time for this to pull back. The sellers are not showing up. So this is something to pay attention to. Now you do have that crossed up, but it is not positive on the daily scale. But you can see how meta is one stock that could make the craziness continue. You're going to get new ranges. The craziness could continue higher with meta because it's been beat up and now people are buying it. As of right now, if you want to see this head higher, you probably need some kind of pullback. We'll talk about that on the daily time frame. Has this turned up on the weekly time frame? Has it turned up on the weekly time frame? No. But if it did and we had to head into higher levels and we see the spy and the cues do something crazy, maybe to create higher levels for those monthly divergences, what would happen? Well, Meta might catch a bid here and create some kind of weekly divergence. So we could end up heading all the way up to like 550 before this thing actually does complete and break down fully and we see some kind of market crash. I do believe a market crash is coming. I think that'll still be in May, honestly. But if it's not, I will be trading like water and I'll play, be playing the signals. Why would I be saying that a market crash could be coming still in May? And that's because the dollar is still green, right? The SPY is heading to higher levels. The, the SPY is pretty much testing those highs, right? So as of right now, you would expect the dollar to be testing the lows, and it's not doing that. People are still selling into this move, and I wanted to bring up the daily chart to really show you that, how you get some green here. Now, what did that do? It retested a level we're paying attention to, 105.65. So on Dixie here, what can we pay attention to? Well, it tested that level, and it's starting to break down. This hasn't gone negative yet, though. So if that turns up at any time, we could be seeing the next moment. And remember, I'm kind of leaning towards something like this happening where we see some kind of head and shoulders in this overall move. I think this would be a very, very telling thing. And if uh, the dollar can turn up, you better be careful in the stock market because even if we had higher, that means the insiders are selling. Now, I do believe once this actually does turn up, we're probably going to see some kind of dramatic selling come in, but we still want to be trading like water. It doesn't mean because I think something's going to happen, it has to. I think it's going to happen is great, but until those signals tell me that I, it's very, very clear, that's when I'll really be um, making some actual plays. 
Now, volatility, this has been beat up for a very long time and the levels we want to pay attention to. First of all, we told you guys, once this closes below the 200, right? We got this firm close below the 200. We were like, yeah, short squeeze is definitely going to happen here. Now, that was something to pay attention to. We're still heading down towards the level of 13. This is where something dramatic could happen, the gap fill. Now we said, okay, because we didn't get anything to really tear us down, what most likely happens here? Well, we might head down to 1212. So if we get some kind of pop in volatility um, early on in the week and then CPI is good news, maybe we go down towards that 12. 12, 12 level and then really i just want to pay attention for this to actually go up into positive territory the key thing to look at here though the weekly scale okay that looks like it wants to turn down so if we do see that extreme positivity what can form here well what if we come down to lower levels for a couple weeks and then that turns back up Let's look at this MACD for a second. The MACD, the reason we knew that initial selling was coming in was because this MACD got into positive territory right around here. So once this got positive, we were like, yeah, some more dramatic selling can happen. OK, that dramatic selling came in, but that has subsided. And now we're heading down towards 1212. If this crosses over, you want to pay attention to that crossing back up in the next few weeks, maybe over the next couple months, because this could be a triple divergence on the volatility here while you do maybe form a triple divergence on the cues. You want to pay attention to those signals at the same time. And if those two signals are proven and confirm at the same time, I'm going to be saying we're most likely getting a stock market crash come May or June. Now, another reason that you could think of some kind of crash is coming is because TLT is not in this move, right? TLT is not in this move. Those yields remain higher at this point, and that really puts pressure on people. And sometime uh, soon that something's going to break. We could see an uninversion. OK, and now it is important to understand that uninversion. Sometimes it takes six to 18 months to actually see that recession come in, to see the top come in. A lot of the time, the dollar bottoms before the, the market tops. A lot of the time, the yields um, top before the market tops, right? So we have to pay attention to these types of things. If TLT is able to catch a bid here, though, on the weekly scale, what would we say? Well, this is going into positive territory. Now we're going to maybe see some kind of flight to safety for some reason, and those yields might come down dramatically. Maybe we are forced to cut because some kind of bank problem. The banks are going to really struggle as the yields remain higher. They remain above that level at 4.5. That is very, very bad. But you can see how it's really close to negative territory there. So CPI could cause some bullishness to come in if that number is good. But if that starts to break down even further, well, that's usually a signal that we're going to see some kind of recession in the next six to 18 months, which is why we have to pay attention to the shorter time frames. That craziness can continue for a little bit. Even with these crash signals confirming, they take time for that top to come in for the SPY. So we're going to be paying attention to the shorter time frames. But it looks like we might be seeing these yields back off. And if those back off, why are they backing off? Are they having to back off really dramatically with, because something is breaking in the system? You really want to pay attention to why this is backing off, not necessarily paying attention to if it's breaking off, breaking down, right? If this is breaking down because CPI is really good news, people are going to see that as bullish in the market. I believe the main takeaway for this video and really what I want to you to take away from it is you have to really understand these tools that we are using to be a good trader. You have to understand what is happening in the overall market and know that things like a short squeeze will end you up in an area where you could be outside of that range, get one of those 32% times. We've actually been landing in the ranges pretty well, so that means 68% chance is landing for us, but we need to pay attention to um, how to actually use these signals, how to actually use these tools. There's a course if you want to do it. And I'm even thinking about making a membership for um, some members here or, or making some members on YouTube where we do a lesson a week where people can show up. You, it'll be a very, very small fee per month and you can just show up every single week and we'll do some kind of talking about a subject, talking about the MACD, talking about the RSI. I feel like that is a very, very affordable way for people who are not fully logical about MACD, anything like that, about the ranges and things. I think that is a very affordable way for you to learn in this market. And tell me if you think that is a good idea in the comments, smash that like button. But I just wanted to say this is an environment we have to be very, very careful. It looks like some things could catch a bid, which is scary because we could see the stock market head even higher, get even more prolonged in this bubble. And then when that bubble pops, it will be some very, very dramatic price action to the downside. So be very cautious out there. Trade like water and you'll be just fine and come back for that Sunday video so we can give you those shorter time frames. But right now, I really just want you to focus on having a good weekend. Have a great weekend and then come into the uh, the next week. Come into Monday with a fresh mind, fresh 
everything ready to go because we're going to have to be on our toes because we could be seeing some crazy price action with CPI this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for liking, subscribing. Thank you to my Patreon members. And let me know if you want that YouTube uh, membership to be made a thing so we can go live and talk with you guys about um, these indicators and how to use them. I think that is a more powerful thing than just saying, oh, I know what uh, moving average you know, convergence divergence. I know what that is. No, you need to understand how to use it and you need to understand why it is important. And I think that that would be a very good thing. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great weekend. Peace.